Question one is the four cylinder fuel injection system shown below is a, a multi point injection system, a single point injection system, uh, an NOx or nitrous oxide injection system, or a diesel injection system. So, what we need to do is to examine the image and try and look for clues as to which is the correct answer. So, I'm just going to enlarge the image. Uh, I apologize for it being a bit pixelated, but let's have a look. Up here, we can see uh, a spark plug lead or an HT lead, high tension lead. And there's one, two, three, four of those. And underneath each of these uh, caps, we would find the spark plug. So with spark plugs and spark plug leads, we can determine that it's a petrol engine. Uh, let's just go back to uh, having a look at the question. Uh, that eliminates the, the last option down here. It can't be a diesel injection system because it has spark plugs since therefore it's a petrol engine. Uh, a nitrous oxide injection system. Now nitrous oxide isn't used very often on production cars. I'm just going to bring in uh, an image of uh, a nitrous oxide aftermarket kit. And nitrous oxide is a gas that is uh, stored in a container, has to be stored in a container on the vehicle. And then there's a, a, a set of equipment. Uh, as I say, it's usually an aftermarket, it's used on race cars. Um, and the single injector uh, for the nitrous oxide would be on the air intake side. So we still have it down here, we can still see the petrol injectors, but we have an additional injector for the nitrous oxide now that clearly isn't part of this image here so just get rid of those so yeah this system here that we're looking at doesn't have a nitrous oxide injection system so we've eliminated the the final uh two answers so, uh, d, c and d that leaves us with is it a multi-point injection system or a single point injection system now we know that the fuel is injected in a petrol injection system generally speaking it's injected into the flow of air as it comes in through the inlet manifold so i've just highlighted the inlet manifold tracks so we need to look for a clue and uh, just where i am now i'm hovering over this is an injector uh, and it will inject fuel petrol into the flow of air as it goes through the inlet manifold so there's one here another one here another one here and just over here you can see another one so there's one injector for each of the inlet manifold tracks so one injector for each cylinder so therefore it is a multi-point injection system um, because there are more than one injector okay let's have a look at question two So question two is a distributorless ignition for a four cylinder engine uses, and then we've got our four options. Uh, so I'm just gonna bring in an image of a uh, ignition system. So what we've got here is our um, secondary coil, and up here is the primary coil. So this represents a coil pack. Now this is from a distributorless system and what you can see here is that both ends of the secondary lead are connected to a spark plug so with this kind of system we will use one coil for two spark plugs let's just go back to the question okay so distributorless ignition system for a four cylinder engine uses four coils so if we've got a four cylinder engine uh, we're going to have four spark plugs now we know that uh, one coil will feed two plugs so we're going to need two coils not four coils all right so that eliminates that one it also eliminates this one we know that we're going to need two coils um, so it's not a and it's not d um, Answer C, contact breaker points. Now, contact breaker points were a very old fashioned switching system that uh, was used in a distributor uh, ignition system. 
Now, ours, uh, the question is about a distributor-less ignition system. So we've got rid of the distributor, so we would have got rid of the contact breaker points. So that only leaves answer B, a wasted spark type of ignition. Just going to bring the image back in again. Now, what happens, because two spark plugs are connected to the uh, secondary coil, they both fire or they both spark at the same time. But only one cylinder is in the correct position to get or to receive a spark. Okay, so they take it in turns to actually operate at the correct time, but when this one fires at the correct time, the spark that happens on this one will be what we call a wasted spark. It happens at the wrong time and vice versa. So when this one fires at the correct time, this one will produce what is a considered to be a wasted spark. Okay. Question three is the chemically correct air fuel ratio of a petrol engine is. Now you guys should know that the uh, chemically correct air fuel ratio is 14.7 to 1. So it's answer D. That's 14.7 kilograms of air for every one kilogram of fuel okay let's move on to question four careful exhaust and intake system design helps lower um, so we've got the options are emissions only reduce heat only noise levels and emissions or noise only now hopefully you guys will understand that an exhaust system uh, will have an impact on the, the emissions uh, that are released. Uh, but they also, uh, the exhaust system is, has silencers built into it. So it's there carefully designed to reduce noise levels. So the best option here is C, because it's a uh, careful design of the exhaust and the air intake system will help lower noise levels and the emissions. Let's have a look at question five. The abbreviation CO with refer reference to exhaust gas uh, means, so the question is what does CO stand for? And it's, uh, hopefully you would know that it's not oxides of nitrogen, that's NOx. It's not completely organic. Uh, because the exhaust emissions definitely aren't organic. Um, it's the, the correct answer is carbon monoxide. Um, if we had a, a, a two, a number two, so it was CO2, it would be carbon dioxide. But because it doesn't have the number two, it's just CO, that's carbon monoxide. So it's one atom of oxygen that is attached to the single atom of carbon. So carbon monoxide is the correct answer. Question six, a supercharger is driven by, and then we've got our options here. So I'm just gonna bring in an image. Um, now it's not that clear, but up here, this is a supercharger. Uh, although not much of the supercharger actually shown in the image. But the reason I'm showing you this image is I wanted to show you that you can clearly see the belt that drives the supercharger and it's being driven from the crankshaft. So the correct answer will be A, a toothed belt from the crankshaft. Uh, you'll find a, a turbocharger is driven by exhaust gas. Uh, the supercharger isn't driven by the camshaft and it's not driven by an air pump. As I say, the correct answer is, as clearly shown in the image, it's a, uh, a belt driven from the, the crankshaft. Question seven, diesel fuel is mainly made up of, and the correct answer for this one is hydrogen and carbon. Basically all fossil fuels so that's petrol, diesel, natural gas, they are all considered to be hydrocarbons. And the hydrocarbon stems from the fact that there is hydrogen and carbon. Question eight, nitrogen, 
carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide are usually found in. Now hopefully you would recognise from the previous conversations that we've had that these are all found in the exhaust gas. All right, so uh, just running through the options, we've got petrol, exhaust gas, diesel fuel, or coolant mixture. Now these are all exhaust emissions, and so therefore they will be found in B, the exhaust gas. Okay, question nine, which of the following is normally an indication of a very weak mixture setting for a petrol engine? <clears throat> and our options are A, a high percentage CO in exhaust gases. Um, so a high percent of carbon monoxide is usually an indicator of incomplete combustion. Uh, if we're running on a weak mixture, then all of the fuel that we put in would normally be burnt. So we would get complete combustion. Um, so we're unlikely to produce a high percent of carbon monoxide. Okay, B, black smoke in the exhaust. Well, uh, black smoke is caused by soot, which happens when we uh, introduce too much fuel, so much fuel that we can't burn it all, so it doesn't fully combust. And, and so black smoke would be indicative of a rich mixture, too much fuel. So it's not likely to be that one. Uh, a very white spark plug insulator, uh, that is the correct answer. I'll come back and explain that in a moment. Let's just rule out D. Uh, D, very high fuel consumption. Okay, with a weak mixture, if we're running on less fuel, which is what a weak mixture is, um, it's possible that we could end up using a bit more fuel because we have to put our foot down more. But to be honest, it's unlikely. It's unlikely that we would get high fuel consumption with a weak mixture. So the correct answer, as I say, is a very white spark plug. I'm just going to show you uh, this image of spark plugs. What happens with a weak mixture um, is that our combustion temperature increases. We produce very, very high combustion temperatures with a weak mixture. And uh, so what happens, any carbon deposits that we may have on the tip of our spark plug will be burnt off in the very high combustion temperatures. So if we have a very white spark plug insulator like this one here, that's a very good indicator that we're running on a weak mixture. If we've got too much fuel, as I said, we produce black smoke because there's lots of carbon and as a result we'll also get a build up of carbon on the tip of our spark plug. So it looks very dark. Uh, this one here, just what I'm showing, uh, you these this this is really an ideal situation this is indicative of an engine running just about right a nice tan brown color so dark dark black is excessive fuel bright white is insufficient fuel a weak mixture okay so uh, the correct answer sorry there the correct answer was C a very white spark plug insulator so question 10 is the ignition dwell angle is the period during which and then we've got our options here now to answer this i'm just going to bring in the image that i used previously uh, to represent the, the the coil pack so it's part of our ignition system now the primary circuit is connected to our 12 volt battery supply on the car so i'm just going to show you uh, this part of the circuit so we have a switch we can switch the primary circuit on and off now that's done by uh, a computer on the cars switched by the ECU but essentially uh, let's just move my cursor out if I close that switch 12 volts will flow through the primary circuit and that induces a magnetic field in both the primary and the secondary circuit but that magnetic field charges up the secondary coil. Uh, and then if I switch the primary circuit off, do that, the secondary field collapses, releases all of its energy, and that's when the spark happens. So the strength of the spark de depends largely on how long we have switched the primary circuit on for. 
So the dwell period or the dwell angle is the length of time that current flows through the primary winding. So it can't be A because that's saying that there's no current flowing through it. Uh, it can't be B because it's not the moment the spark occurs at the spark plug. It's, the answer is answer C. It's the time during which a magnetic field builds up in an ignition coil. All right, that's the time that this is switched on for. So the magnetic field is building up uh, and it's not D. It's nothing to do with when the piston reaches top dead center. So the correct answer is C. The ignition dwell angle is a period during which a magnetic field builds up in the ignition coil.